September 25th, and it's National One Hit Wonder Day. Listed on the one hit wonder chart. Do you remember the song Last Kiss? Well, there it is. Well, I want to read to you about today. It says National One Hit Wonder Day, September 25th. National One Hit Wonder Day is celebrated annually on September 25th. This day is a day to celebrate all the musical artists and songs that became known from one top 40 single. Listed below are just a few of the well-known one-hit wonders from days gone by. They have Earth Angel, by the Penguins, Six Days on the Road by Dave Dudley, Tiptoe Through the Tulips by Tiny Tim, Smile a Little Smile for Me, Rosemary, <laughs> The Flying Machine, that was in 1969, 1970, One Ten Soldier by Original Cast. 1970, The House of the Rising Sun by Frig Frigid Pink. 1972, Hot Rod Lincoln. Na, na, na. By Commander Cody and his Lost Planet Airmen. And 1983, Putting on the Ritz by Taco. 1988, Don't Worry, Be Happy. Bobby McFerrin. Do any of these bring back memories? You may choose to listen to some or many of the one hit wonders on this music field day. Use hashtag one hit wonder day to post on social media. Our research was unable to find the creator or the origin of national one hit wonder day. An unofficial national holiday. So I did my own little research and I found this page tunecaster.com and I'll post the link below. But it has some conflicting information. In Tunecaster it says what is a one hit wonder? A one-hit wonder is an artist with exactly one top 20 hit, strictly speaking. If you recall the other information I just read from the National Holiday can Calendar said, it's a, it's a hit from the top 40. Also, Tunecaster says, also an artist with no top songs, but with one song far more famous than any other. And then on the page, you can click the year and it'll tell you about these one hit wonders, but just an overview. In 1960, do you remember the song Dominique by the Singing Nun? That's a one hit wonder. And then in 
excuse me, that was, excuse me, that was 1963. And then 1968, Mary Lee Rush and the Turnabouts had a hit, Angel in the Morning, and Vicki Lawrence. I believe that was 1973, had a hit the night, the lights went out in Troy. a song I loved Marcy Playground reached number one rock then crossed over to make number one pop with sex and candy the band made the top 20 again but had no more pop 20 songs oh but it doesn't say the year I think that was in the 90s. That was a cool song. Well, anyways. Here's my one hit wonder, Last Kiss. And on the flip side, the Last Kiss was by L.J. Frank Wilson and the Cavaliers. Side A was last kiss and then side B was that's how much I love you and I used in the 70s my big thrill as a kid was Kmart at the time it was the only place we could get our record and Kmart had an end cap with their 45s I was such a radio music junkie love music and for 99 cents at the most I remember sometimes for some reason I remember like 57 cents and 68 cents I would just remember it going up to 99 cents per 45 oh that that was a good a good life and going home playing it on my record So anyways, that's my little celebration for today, National One Hit Wonder Day. And, um, um, the year that this was, was, uh, it was 1964, and some of the other songs from 1964. Are listed on. Some of them you'll remember. The girl from Ipanema. Suspicion by Terry Stafford. Who do you love by the Sapphires? Ringo by Lauren Green. Don't let the rain come down by Crooked Little Man. Serendipity Singers Just Like Romeo and Juliet The Reflections High Heel Sneakers Tommy Tucker Who Do You Love The Sapphires So And also what I have for today Since we were talking Are a little sticky. I think I left them in the cloak for a little bit too 
like a little number later on, but I melt it in the heat. Mm. Just like I remember. These were so fun as a kid. Mm. The other fun little candy. Remember these? These little nickel, nickel wafers. Okay. The original candy wafer made in the USA since 1847. A little history of the Necco wafer. In 1847, a young English immigrant named Oliver Chase invented the first American candy machine, a lo lozenge cutter. After initial success selling his new candy, he and his brother Silas Edwin founded Chase and Company which became the pioneer member of the New England Confectionery Company, Necco family. Over the years, Necco wafers became so popular, over the years, became so popular that in the 1913 famed Arctic explorer, Donald McMillan, gave them to Eskimo children on his journeys to the north, and in the 1930s, Admiral Byrd included two and a half tons of Necco wafers in his supply list for a two-year stay in the Antarctic. Then, during World War II, the U.S. government requisitioned a major portion of production for American soldiers serving in World War II as the wafers didn't melt and rarely broke during transport. Today, approximately 630 million Necco wafers are made each year, placed edge to edge. They would go around the world twice. Mm -hmm. oh, these are fun. Mm. These are really fun. Thanks so much for watching.